Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. Hello, good morning everyone, and uh, welcome to our Sunday show. You are listening to WCAT Radio, and I'm Kahama Emmanuel Peter. Today we are going to have a visitor who will, will introduce oneself, and uh, he will share with us today on the matters related to the people living with the disabilities or people with the disabilities. So in a short form, we will be using PWDs to mean people with the disabilities. So today we'll be discussing um, as, uh, on the background some of the things will be what are these PWDs, uh, the categories, and probably this, the, the sources or why do we have these people with the PWDs? And then we also focus uh, if time allows, and um, what are the social perceptions toward PWDs? Uh, what are the laws covering uh, these things and still the policies and uh, related matters? Then we can also find uh, the way forward. So, um, welcome, Mr. Nkama, and you can introduce yourself and uh, tell us what is really, really, really inside you about. Uh, the matters related to people with, living with a disability. So you're welcome. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Kahama. Uh, as introduced earlier, my name is Ilde Fonsim Kahama. Uh, I have, um, I'm a practitioner, I would say I've been in the field of disability for almost six years now. And currently <clears throat> I'm doing my PhD in the same area particularly in the area of deafness. So uh, why I'm interested to perhaps be working in this area because it's the area with a lot of challenges and controversies about the perception and social perception and about the human rights and all what have you. So that's it. That's how I, that's who I am and that's what I'm, I'm doing so far. Wow, thank you so much. But uh, we would wish to hear also, uh, now you are doing PhD, but uh, where are you working now probably and uh, yeah, the experience with these things? Okay, you have said you have been working in the field for about six years. Maybe now what is your experience or what institution are you working with now as you are serving this field? That's what I'm, 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 I'm working as a lecturer at, at Bishop Mia University College of Tabola in short form Amukta, and I'm in the Department of um, Special Needs and Languages and Linguistics. <clears throat> it's from this department I'm giving my lectures. And in, in this department, this depa depa department gives us an avenue to really interact with a lot of people with disabilities, but also to have some consultations on advocacy, especially when it comes to the rights of people with disabilities. As, as you know, Tanzania, we have ratified a lot of policies from the, the global policies, the local policies, which need the country as a nation to move forth to enhance the rights of people with disabilities in writings. But when it comes to the change from uh, optimism into realism, that's another issue. So, of course, really we are coming a lot, we are, coming, we are facing a lot of challenges in this area. But I think um, maybe we can begin from its conception when we, begin, when we, when we talk about about people's disabilities, what well, is this is a very big challenge because people think now I may take it from the definitions of the uh, Disability Act of 2010, perhaps, and the policy on disability of 2004. All these define persons with disabilities as an individual with a limited uh, capacity to enhance living, no normal living of people that has limited functions. Now, these limited functions may, may emanate from the body structure, maybe from the psychological setup. You know, it's, it's about how you may not fit into the society. This is, this is called a person, with, a person with a disability. 
given that you have some limited functions to cope with the normal living. You are falling in this uh, the, the the group of people with disabilities. So from from now when you take it from the, the definition of each point of view, you understand that um, the people with disabilities are usually defined from the normal spectrum. That uh, there is a line that is drawn that this is the line of normal, and this is the line of abnormal. Now, who defines this line? Are these people who are called themselves normal, who think they are not disabled? So it's like a person who just moves, just walk. The person who can walk, a person who can speak, a person who can cherish, can hear, can he considers himself as normal. Now, if now if 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 he comes across a person who cannot walk on his feet, for example. That's abnormal. Now that's the person with disability. But the person that that person who does, does, can, cannot work has not defined himself or herself as being a disabled person. But he is defined by a person who is not a crippled, for example, a person who is not an albino, a person who is not deaf, a person who is not blind, a person who is not autistic. A person who has no cognitive impairment, cognitive or intellectual impairment, this is a person who has all, has no all this is the one who defines others, no? But you give, when you give an avenue to these people who have this kind of phenomenon, they cannot define that they are disabled. They cannot define themselves that they are disabled. So that's a perception of disability. So, as I've said, from now from the policy, from the act, from from Tanzanian perspective, international perspectives, people's abilities are divided into several categories. But majorly, there are those with a physical disability. There are those with a cognitive disability. There are those with a visual impairment. There are those with hearing impairment. And there are those with skin disabilities, the albinos, and there are those autistics. Now these autistics, sometimes they fall in the category of cognitive, sometimes not. For example, in the case of autism, this is a, a, a spectrum of disability. It's about a neurological kind of, no, it has no one. It's a, a, it's mat, a, it's a, a, com complex, yeah, it's a complex one. Yes. So there are these kind of categories. And each of these has the causes. For example, when it comes to physical disability, we may not have one cause. We may have several. There are people who are born like that, that's congenital. There are those which have it or get it when or after birth, that's post. They are quiet later. Perhaps they come across the accidents illness, sometimes stress, you know. When it comes to stress, stress can bring something on a stroke, then can take it out you now. There are a lot of issues that come out. So it's no, we may not have one, one source. Likewise, when it comes to deafness, there are those people who are born deaf. There are those who are quiet later. And when those there are those who are quiet later, after they have acquired language, or they don't have language, so they've got a bilingual or postlingual. There are also this deaf. There are those who, with residual hearing loss. It depends also on the levels of hearing loss. Now, when it comes to deaf, for example, deaf one deaf person is not the same. Yeah, it depends on the age of onset, the causes of of, of deafness, uh, the age the, well, the age when did you acquire it? What is the cause? What is the level of hearing loss? Is it mild? Is it moderate? Is it severe? Is it likewise? It goes all, all to all the, this kind of uh, disabilities. Likewise, when it comes to skin, skin that's albinos, that's too biological. It depends on the clothing, the genetic, genetic makeups of the person. And um, so maybe maybe if I may ask, skin hmm. on the part of how we use it. We have, we have been several cases, especially in countries like Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Where uh, people with albinism have been uh, killed, parts of the border have been chopped mm -hmm. off 
because of some um, belief that uh, their body can be used to help someone acquire richness, to acquire wealth, to acquire position and uh, what 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 does this mean? What is it from the political point of view? How do these people become albinos and why do people think this can work? Uh, you know, in the bloated term, when it comes to disability, disability goes with the negative attitude of the society. That's the negativity, the side of it. That's why I said from the beginning, who defines disability? It's the society. So it's about the negative attitude. And I will tell you, there's nothing about wealthy in albinism. You, you, you can't take someone's body parts that can take you into whatever, that the richness, that, that can't work. But it is about the, the perception, you know. It's about the superstitious beliefs. It's about, I, would, I don't know what you call it. A lot of contradictions, you know. So that's, 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 that's so, you know, sometimes from we Christians believe from biblical point of view, for example, when it comes to deaf people, there are a lot of people who still believe that the deaf person is the person with demons. You know, to assist them, that this has a demon, so it's, it has a cause, no, you know, he cannot hear. It's, it's from the biblical point of view, it's from religious point of view. You know, so it's, it's like that. So, for when it comes to this albinism, of course, there have been um, reportedly cases that these people are facing, you know, are being killed, they're being what, what. You know, when, I, when we are still ch- children, those year, years, we heard like, you no know, deaf people, I mean, the, 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 the albinos are not, when they die, they disappear. So they, they do not really die like other people. Yes, just yes, disappear. yes, That's yes, right. imagine. Now, we had that uh, um, conception. No? Whenever you, 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 you see an albino, you know, that this person disappears when he, he becomes old, she becomes old, and she just disappears. And I tell you, I never saw any barrio ceremony of the albino. It was those days. Perhaps I would say maybe because these issues were not reported. But in fact, uh, if I may interrupt, I've never... Uh, I've never been, uh, been uh, since I was young, I've never been in the same hearing or um, people saying we are going for the burial of someone who was an albino. Yeah. When I was young, yeah. when I was still a very young boy, yeah. I never had that. Yeah. And in fact, I used to believe in the very same story that yeah. albinos, they never die, they simply disappear. Yeah. And people, they were telling me, ah, have you ever seen a grave of an albino? I said, you know, but the question was, do you, do do we write the grave of people like this one was a normal human person, this was a normal? Yeah, that's human that's the most ridiculous. So, I know that's the most. That's person. the most ridiculous question, no? <laughs> and because I was very young, I believed the same. But in fact, I have my friends, I have people, and in fact, people they just die like any other human person. Yeah, yeah. They, definitely, 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 but, definitely. Yeah, so in fact, it's, it's something which goes in the negative part. Yes, in the negative part, you know. And rather. It was used perhaps to induce people to kill these people silently so that whenever they disappear, they may say, he has just disappeared. But in fact, maybe they have yeah. just been... This kind of justification, you know, there's okay, justifying the killings, yeah. I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, now, if, I, I, it has come to my senses, I would say, that yeah. these people, since then, they were killed. killed in fact. But not reported, because the society has already been implanted with this kind exactly. of notion yeah. that these people disappear. You know, now with the advance of science and technology, the growth of media industry, now people come to know ah, these people are being killed. Now it's where now the advocacy comes from. No. Yes. Yeah. So this 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 is just one case with the albinos, and we may have several cases with these others. You know, now these albinos were being killed. They are facing this kind of murder, calamity, or whatever. These others are facing a very serious case of exclusion. So the very serious case with, when it comes to their part, they're facing exclusion. They are not interacted in any area. They're put they are, they're just put aside. Why? Because Anna, these people are disabled. No, disability is never an ability. No, this is a disability vis-a-vis inability. Who told you that's the person okay this if the person cannot cannot work. Can't he think also? Can think, he can 
You know, he has, he has strengths and he has weaknesses as others, just same. Yeah, like in the case you have said, uh, these people are not being included, the, the question of uh, not including the people with different disabilities. We have been having cases, I think, uh, with uh, so many families to hide their children when they are maybe crippled or if they have uh, things like cognitive challenges. Mm. They, they say, like, no, it's a shame, it's a curse. Mm. Why should we disclose these people? And it happens someday they come to be discovered or the, the, the nearby the neighbors will come to the like maybe after 10 or yeah. even 15 also, years. Yes. These people are not given food well, they are not given mm -hmm. any good shelter. Mm -hmm. They become like uh, um, just the crazed inside as if they are animals. Yeah. Now maybe according to what you are doing, uh, what, what is the situation now? How are the people responding towards bringing these people outside to the community? And what are you doing at least to see things such as Yeah, we still have a very heavy job to go through. Yes. You know? we, have, we have been working, you know, um, uh, as I told you, I'm in this area for almost six years. We are now, what we are doing is uh, we are trying to raise these people from their homes. We are trying to adv make advocate for service provision to families. And we're not going to think kind of it an identification at the family level. And we take these people from there. We try to, uh, to advise the parents to see these people as just regular persons, you know. But the situation, I tell you, is worse. It, it is worse because the people who give birth to these people with disabilities and they find no, this person cannot even go to school because this is not worth you know, it's not, it's a curse. There. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's not a blessing to the family, it's a curse so that you just put aside. As you have said, sometimes we came to we just come to identify that this person is. This kind of disability when he's 10 or he's 12, it's now you start like, okay, we have to send this person to school to grade one at 10. And I tell you, there are cases. When you go to secondary education, for example, when I'm not doing my research yeah, in this area of deafness, for example, people go to, people reach form four when they're 20, 21, 22. And because of age, they just drop out. They don't even want to proceed because you know, the whole class is cool. yeah, the whole class is full of children, you know, with my twenty three. I can't cope with this thing. So they go even even the brain the brain is now undergoing rusting, you know, when we don't with age, you know, it is going undergoing rusting. Yeah. So the situation is not good at all. First, when it comes to error identification, that is from from, from family level from the society. So exclusion begins there. And even if they're taken to schools, even if they're being capacitated, okay, they have degrees, they have diplomas, they have masters. When it comes to employment, they're also facing another exclusion. These employers think like, I cannot employ a blind person. It cannot work. I cannot employ an albino, it cannot work. I cannot employ the deaf. Despite that, we have the act that, I don't know whether it has changed, you are a lawyer, yes. but at least I, what the, 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 the act I know now is of uh, 1982. That's the Disabilities Act? Not disability, that is the... Employment. Okay, the Labor National Employment Act. Yes, I think that's yes. a 1982. Yeah. Now we, we are using the current one of 009. 009. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. As it was amended, so it was amended in 002. It was, yeah. It so, 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 of course, when I take from that, uh, the, the previous one, yes. it, was, it was speaking about the, the, the quarter scheme. Quarter scheme. I don't know. It never worked. I don't know. It is 3%. Now, if you are having workers for about 20 of them, 3% mm. of all of these workers, they must be people with people disabilities. But now, still, what I see as a challenge is uh, it's not easy sometimes to make these people compete equally. That's why the Disabilities Act of 2010, the Act number 9 of 2010, mm. 
has established what we call the positive uh, segregation. The positive, um, we like, uh, we separate you from others for a positive intention. Mm. We need these people to have, like, let's say it's, a, if it's an interview, I think for me, as for the positive segregation of these people, we need them to be interviewed or after we have finished the interview of people who are not disabled, then we reserve this 3% for the people with disability and they come independent, just alone, mm. just themselves. Mm. You interview them alone and you work with them later with the other group because sometimes still they have that fear themselves. Also, when they see others, they can move very fast, they can move very fast. But if yeah. you work with them independently, mm. it works. Now, I tell you now, that's the, that's the act. That's the law. But in reality, that's not seen being implemented. It's not. Because I've been, for example, Tabora here, I've been just moving around some situations. You know, I went to police. I went to hospital with these medical centers. I tell you, there's no this kind of ratio. We don't have it there. Sometimes I was thinking, I once had a tete-a-tete talk with one of the managers of this social security yes. funds. I asked, how do you handle people with disabilities over here? You have no slopes. Exactly. You have no, no, you, you, no lifts, no lifts no for example, for physical. Exactly. You have no sign language interpreters exactly. for the deaf. You have no blails exactly. for blind. How do you handle people's abilities? And this is a government institution. This is a government institution. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. challenge. So what I'm saying, going through this kind of disability, going up here, that's what is one thing. But changing people's attitude, that's what's important for now. You know, it's a, we need to understand. This is one scholar usually like Shakespeare yes. said, everyone is a disabled at a point in time. That's very true. Because what we think is, okay, when we see this present, this is a disabled Who is not a disabled person? Who is not? A degree. We have, everyone has a, a sort of disability in a degree. What we do for just a degree. This person is a, the degree is high, but our degree is kind of minute. So it's okay, we are not disabled. We are disabled. So what we need to come is just to level it out. See, every person has equal and one. I think I think this is very right. So now, uh, as you have said, the most important thing is to do the advocacy, especially on changing the attitudes of the people yeah. towards people with disabilities. Because uh, uh, it's hard, in fact, because if the families cannot really, really take care of them, cannot even bother about them, whom one else do you think will love them? Yeah. Because we ever say, as yeah. Mother Teresa said, Charity begins at home. Definitely. So if nobody at home loves you, who would you expect mm-hmm. outside your family to love mm-hmm. you? But probably these families, they do not uh, love these people or they do not take, take much care of these people because um, of the previous um, conceptions, yeah, conceptions, yes. yeah. conceptions, as in their cars and what. Mm-hmm. But now today we all know that it's not a car. Mm-hmm. These are things related to our genetics. These are things related to the foods we eat, probably, yes. to the drugs we are taking, yes, life struggles. probably yeah. issues like lifestyle. Some people, they are like um, using headphones yeah. for so Definitely. long. It affects the eardrums. Mm-hmm. Things become mm-hmm. worse. Mm-hmm. People, they might get an accident. Mm-hmm. They become crippled. Mm-hmm. But also, um, maybe something in question. Like, I think I remember when I was there, I think in Kong, oh, we were asking this question to us, that there were two young, young people, a man and a woman, these people, they married each other and they were not albinos or mm-hmm. But uh, unfortunately, they gave birth to a child albino. who was an albino. Yeah. And it was like, it cannot be. It's about like, cheating. Yes, it's about what it's was here. about definitely. cheating. Uh-huh. This is about that cheat. Now, what are the things maybe, maybe can cause to, or to the things like that? That people don't have albinos, but they give a child birth to a child who is an albino. What are the no, you know, yeah, it's it's about it's, it's about the genetic makeups. You know, it's about closing. When we yeah. get married, 
sometimes you have not gone to check out even the razors, the what what, exactly. you know. Bradley we just, we, yes, blood lasers. We just love, we just fall, we just fall in love, you know, okay, this person is our, oh, this kind of beautiful, you know, you just fall in love. But you don't know the genes, the closing, the razors, sometimes. You know, this albinism might be from the first generation. Not even the second, not even the third, from the first. But closing in biology, it's elemental biology. At least it goes up, just goes down. So you find closing comes to appear in the first generation. You get married to X, this is why you get married to X, then you close, you get an albini. It depends which genes now dominates. Exactly, especially from both the... I think yes, if, if, uh, so this kind of gen- genetic, you yes. can't find that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because uh, in fact it really works with the uh, kind of, or maybe, because let's say some, there's a statement or the term is used as these people are carriers. Carriers. You have ca- carried some element of albinism, you are not an albino, but you have some element of albinism. Mm-hmm. And this one also has some element of albinism, but he's not an albino. Yeah. As the way of saying the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the crossing of the genes from the father and the mother, so as it went from the first, second, third, or to the fourth children, mm-hmm. one of them becomes a woman because now the carriers now have come to to to, to, yes. to formulate the yes. formula which yeah. brings out the, really brings out them. this brings a lot of conflict to many families. Like yeah. we can't have one of in any family where there isn't a winner. You must have cheated with the winner. So we need now to have a kind of a medical point of view. We should go for check up and find out why this person is this and why this person is that. Because at the end of the day, we might really get into conflicts and we kill people. Yeah, even though, even if, even if you, you, you have a, a, a child who is an albino, he's still human. Still human. You know, previously, uh, I would say that uh, exclusion even now, you know, it's, it's worse, worse, but I think in, in the beginning it's even worse. Initially, we, we had this kind of, no, when we have to get married, you have to understand mm, the, 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 the clan, the whole thing, where there are issues of albinism, where there are issues of leprosy, uh, where there are issues of, you know. If we don't get married to albinos, who will get married? How would they get married? Oh, to whom would they get married? They're humans. So here I'm saying it's about the conception, it's about understanding, it's about the perception of people. That's why I said disability is in the society. It's from societal point of view. So Mr. Kama, I tell you, the society may see you, this person as no, this person is disabled. Why? Perhaps you cannot, you cannot speak so you are disabled because you're not normal. Ah, oh, this person, you know, a lot of uh, blah, 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 blah. Not this kind of disability. But it's not inability. They have their capacity to work. We see a lot of blind people working. We have professors. I will tell you, we have professors, blind professors. We have. And we have people who are not blind. They are not, they have not acquired anything. They have everything they would say. They are not dis- disabled, but they have nothing. Compared to this professor. That means Definitely. we are denying big things, big right position to these people simply because they are simply lacking something which we have. But without knowing, they are having greater things than what we have. What we, what we, yes, definitely. What we need to know when it comes to dealing with these people we are calling disabilities. One, is to understand their psychology. Two, is to understand their needs. When you, you need to work with a person with disability. You need first to understand him in terms of his needs, in terms of her needs, in terms of her own psychology. For example, when you employ a blind person, when you work with a blind person, that person can hear but cannot see, cannot read this orthography, whatever, whatever. But can use braille and pegging machines and what, what, all these facilities must be around for communication. So you can have tape recorders, whatever you will record, then that can just transfer that audio into layers, paperwork, and yeah, that's very really true really because important. I think I've been working with Dr. Sebastian Mahfoud, the, the director of this radio, uh, also the owner of this radio uh, in the US. He, we, when we started working with him in the first days, we would talk 
we would talk in a phone. Yep. And later he would send us the, the, the scripts of what we were, the transcripts of whatever we were discussing. Yep. So it's very possible. I think what we need to do, as you have said, first to understand these people, understand their needs, their psychology, and create the favorable conditions or environment yep. to support them to, support them. to work. Yes. Because everybody needs some kind of environment to work better. Yep. Only the degree of needs can be different. But if we really need to go as together as one, we need to support each other. Because let's say like there is, we say even in the church, maybe people go people go for mercy on Sundays, but I do not know those who are deaf especially. How do they follow the mercy? But how much does it cost for us to get one person to simply first we have to understand this good area. We have we set a location maybe in front. Mm-hmm. Someone sits there, mm. and another person mm. who will interplay. Mm. Definitely, it. probably we can have maybe a screen somewhere mm. there. Everything is prepared in advance, and it's being displayed there. At least they can read. So we need, the, I think, as you have said, to have this environment, having slabs in the social and community yeah, grounds, yeah, yeah. Uh, having interpreters in our yes, media yeah, yeah, masses yeah. and yeah. Yeah, such locations. Yeah. But maybe in terms of school, let's say in schools, uh, maybe to the level of, from primary or college, whatever, how do you also, what have you seen, what have you observed? How are the people, especially deaf, maybe uh, those with visual impairment, the hearing impairment, how are they really helped and treated? The whole thing, the whole situation is wish wash, I would say. But when it comes to education, I would call this is most Probably uh, they are sensitive part of it. We have now an inclusive education policy. Uh, of um, we, we ratified that in, in 2010, something like 2009. We know the strategy okay now from now we have to just go into inclusion. That's one school with all there, you know. It's very good because people can understand from one another. But the big challenge is. Uh, this from research point of view. When this policy was introduced, teachers were not capacitated to understand what is inclusion, to understand this identification and interventions. You know, teachers were not capacitated. What was done was just the government saying, okay, now from this we are going to implement inclusive education and we bring you brand people. We bring, you know, this kind of now, in, in schools, it's worse. It's worse. What is done there? What's done there? For example, you find a class with one class, this one, one, one screen, one answer. I went there. One, in one class, there are deaf people, there are blind people, there are hearing people, there are physical challenged people, you know. One teacher. One teacher, this teacher, the hearing person, he's teaching this class with the blind. At least the blind can hear but cannot see. The blind has the machine, can hear and limited in seeing. No. The same time, the teacher speaking, the blind hears. The deaf can't hear. Yet the teacher does not know some language. And the Northern language interpreters. This is the situation. That's when most cases, I would say, when it comes to deaf, the situation is even more worse. Because statistics tell us, I'll tell you, from zero, from 2015 to 2019, I've done research. In one school, in Moshi, 99% 99% of deaf students who were enrolled in that time got Division Zero. 99%. One school in Tabora, 80-something percent got Division Zero. And one school, special school in Jombe, 75% got Division Zero from 2015 to 2019. Now, the problem, what's the problem? What's the problem? The problem is not the students, but usually we teach it's okay. It's about the students. 
They can't understand. They can't what what. But the situation is not inclusive. Wow. So we schools are not inclusive. You know, it's about inclusive culture. When whenever we speak of inclusion, I tell you one thing: we need to have that called called collaborative tolerance. If we don't have this kind of collaborative tolerance, that we tolerate, we understand your your, your challenges. We can move as a, as a team. You have limited water taxes. We carry you up. We have this. We just hold you up. If we don't have that collaborative tolerance, there's nothing about inclusion. Whenever it comes to inclusive education, inclusive employment, inclusive whatever, if we don't have collaborative tolerance. Everything is zero. So in schools, it's worse. Now we need also to change the system. We need to change the setting. We need to change the culture. This one of the big issue, big things I'm now thinking, of course, to be doing later, perhaps next year, to try to implement inclusive culture. At least in this particular school, okay, we have we train sign language as language. A complete language. At least everyone there can use sign language, where this deaf person can at least cooperate. And we have these kind of slopes. We have this kind of technological instruments where we can. We have the albinos. We have these kind of the jellies. They are usually smelling on their skins, you know. To at least put them, we have caps, you know, for the albinos. For the blind, we have the machines. Respective machines for their communication. With the physical, we have slopes, and we have classrooms that support this kind of disability. You cannot have a class of two hundred people. No possible. No possible at all. At least you can have one class with all these kind of disabilities. But we change this kind of teaching styles. Yes, collaborative teaching is also allowed. I know the needs of the deaf people. Okay, I can assist. This person is training visual disabilities, can assist, and all this. Then we have this kind of humanity, collaborative tolerance. Then we can move as a team. So I think what we need now to do is just the advocacy. That is the big thing forward. Wow, that's that's very great. I, I maybe we say we thank the government for at least starting this uh, inclusive schools. Though, as you have said. The situation is not inclusive in yeah, the classes. No, maybe as we are pushing for the advocates, um, slowly maybe things will keep on changing. Because now it's our work for us to, we have opted to work for these people. We really need to do the best. Yeah, sure. Because at, at the end of the day, no one knows tomorrow. We might also become one of them in yeah, the future. Yeah. Um, we would love to be loved. So we should also start practicing this today. Definitely. And maybe what what is the role to the to the universe to the colleges like Amukta towards changing this. What do you think maybe you should add maybe you may advise the institution where you are or maybe what would you, would, you, would be your advice to any other such institution which is uh, uh, is doing or is offering these uh, skills to the student teachers who are going to teach to the institutions later how to work in the institutions later. Uh, especially with certain people with these disabilities. So what would be your advice to such kind of institutions? So students who are also spreading there. Uh, big thing big thing that I would like to to advise, of course from our point of view, what we are doing, we are doing social outreach activities. That's very important. But also we are um, uh, we are reaching people. We are extending our services from classes to the society. There are those people who um, have not been uh, what they have not accessed the university education because of some one two factors. Yet they can benefit from the university. They can benefit from the college. Colleges and the universities need to extend their services towards people. Changing the attitude of the society is not only in class because we have only one percent of the population in class, but ninety nine percent is outside. And they have no access to university education. We have to face, we have to face them. What we are, we, are, we are doing as the university, we are making consultancy like this one here. We are making consultancy. We are making social outreach activities. We are conducting researches and coming out with the results 
that need change you know so we are doing a lot of great things and i would also urge the other universities and colleges also to really step out of lectures and go to other issues now it's about lectures beyond lecturing we really need to go to social work we need to go to to to, to, to make a consultancy a lot of consultancies we need to make a lot of research and research in disability is very limited in Tanzania very limited why because there are a lot of there are, there are very few a few experts in this area so a lot of people are like no i can't go to research on this because whenever i meet for example the deaf and i cannot sign i can't do anything and whenever I'm meeting the blind he cannot see me okay when you can ask but i can need some perhaps to do some documentary review how do i go around this rails is now paperwork so it's also limited very limited research and i tell you also the government ma- perhaps might think it's good they have made, put a step but they're also thinking perhaps that uh, by putting these people together we are trying to solve something you know it's cheap inclusion is expensive it needs time it needs money it needs resources it needs advocacy it needs collaborative tolerance it is a lot a lot yeah. a lot of issues yeah that's great i think we will have a lot to work together through this uh, mm-hmm. seven months to come mm-hmm. probably we will need a lot of time to share and try to do the advocacy first to the people themselves who are having disabilities that they should understand and appreciate themselves mm-hmm. they should not keep what god has given them because of the disability they have they mm-hmm. should really be ready to express themselves as much as they can mm-hmm. but indeed to the community from the family level as we have said uh, the families the community should perceive them as any other human person in the community. yeah definitely and indeed to try to push um, for what the government has set in the laws policies because having the laws uh, from the international level local level policies is different from the part of implementation of that. Yeah, definitely. So I think we will do the advocacy sharing with the government, different people, our church institutions and research, at least to see how we can do the advocacy. Yeah, Anyways, um, thank you so much. Probably we will meet next time and discuss about the same. So if you have another thing big before we end up this session? Uh, mine is just a call to the society. That has, has been my, the, my, my, my calls usually. Um, I'm calling upon the society to really see the disability as the thing, as the social, as the social and the, uh, the reality. It's still, it's still, disability is a real phenomenon. It's a reality. And from an ontological point of view, we have to understand it as the life reality, as the human reality, that today you are not a disabled person, tomorrow you will be a disabled person. That's one. So I need at least urge the society to see that disability is the human reality. One. Two, disability is not, it's not an inability. Thank you so much. And Pleasure. I'm happy that you have heard that. I think my call is uh, to say that um, we are all disabled. The question is the matter of time and degree. Yeah. We should only keep on praying to those who are disabled today and praying for ourselves that we should not see others as uh, people with you know, any positive advantage to our community. Yeah. So thank you so much, and I hope we'll share more as this goes. This goes. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you, and have a lovely Sunday. Hello, Tumsi Fes Christo. Uh, karibu katika kipijite, tutaji mpiri ya leo ambayo basi tutapenda tukushirikishe uh, mambo kadhaa hasa juu ya kukuza uelewa na kuuisha haki za watu waishio na ulemavu. Hivyo basi katika Jumapili ya leo tutakuwa na mgeni ambaye yeye ni mwalimu. Kwa kweli ni mwalimu wangu kwanza alinifundisha chuo lakini basi sasa pia leo uh, anaendelea na masomo yake. Ni, ni PhD candidate anaendelea kufanya utafiti sasa juu ya watu wenye ulemavu watu waishio na ulemavu wa aina tofauti tofauti. Hivyo basi katika Jumapili ya leo 
tamkaribisha atajitambulisha yeye mwenyewe atasema jina lake ni nani anafanya nini na aweze kutushirikisha machache juu ya swala hili la kusaidia au kukuza uelewa wa haki za watu waishio na ulemavu hii ni WCT Radio karibu na tuweze kwenda pamoja mwalimu karibu na uweze kujitambulisha Asante bwana Kama jina langu naitwa mwalimu Ildefons Mkama. Napenda sana kuitwa mwalimu. Ni wangu nasema ah, mwadhiri nani lakini mwalimu. Na nimekuwa eh, ninafanya kazi za mukta Chuo kikuu cha Askofu Mkunia Yotabora hapa. Kwa muda wa miaka sita sasa niko kwenye maeneo ya watu wenye ulemavu nafanya maeneo hayo. Na eh, nimekuwa nikifanya maeneo hayo kwa muda na nimejifunza mengi sana kutokana na hali hiyo ya ule mabu kwa ujumla na kwa sasa nafanya shahada ya tatu wanita shahada ya uzamivu kwenye eneo la watu wenye ule mavu lakini hasa hasa kwa watu viziwi kwa, kwa, kwa viziwi watu wenye ukiziwi au viziwi kwa ndiko niko maeneo hayo na kufanya kama ulivyosema eh, swala la watu wenye ule mavu linahitaji taaluma hasa ya jamii kwenye jamii ambako wao wanahitaji kuelewa ule mavu nini kwanza na bati mbaya sana e, maana ya hili neno ule mavu au watu wenye ule mavu limetokana na jamii yenyewe nasema jamii mtu mtu mwenye ule mavu ni nani mtu mwenye ule mavu ni, ni, ni yule ambaye amepungukiwa ufanisi wa kuishi maisha ya kawaida kutokana na sababu mbalimbali bali ama za viungo ama za akili ama na za kisaikolojia na kadhalika na kadhalika yani kikubwa ni amepungukiwa ufanisi wa kuishi maisha ya kawaida sasa utajiuliza kwanza maisha ya kawaida ni yapi kwenye neno maisha ya kawaida ndiko ambako eh huyu mtu mwenye ulemavu anaanza kutengwa kwa sababu kuna kundi linaloona linaisha maisha ya kawaida linaisha maisha ya kawaida na wengine hawaishi maisha ya kawaida kwa mfano mtu asiyesikia maana hana ukawaida yani ukawaida ni kusikia lakini asiposikia sikuwi si wa kawaida mtu ambaye ana rangi ya ualbino Huyu sio wakawira kwa sababu sisi tumezoea rangi yetu ni rangi fulani kawia labda. Huyu mtu hawezi kutembea kwa sababu alipata ajali akavunjika miguu sio wa kawaida. Ukawaida ni kutembea. Nani aliweka ukawaida? Ni jamii yenyewe ambayo anajiona yenyewe ipo kawaida. Lakini ulemavu hauko ndani ya mtu yule ambaye ana ulemavu. Uko nje yake ambako ndio jamii imempa ulemavu. Sijui kama nimejaribu kueleweka hapo. Kwa hiyo mtu kwa mfano uh, mtu anayetumia kiti cha cha mataibi mjo limavu wa viungo ndani yake yeye ukiingia ndani kabisa ndani ndani kule hana ule mavu kwa sababu anaweza akafikiria anaweza akaongea anaweza akatembea aka, aka, aka hama kutoka sehemu moja kwenda sehemu nyingine lakini namna ya kuhama yeye ni tofauti si tunatembea kwa miguu yeye anasukuma taibi anaweza akafanya kitu chochote ameoa ana watoto amesoma amefanya nini ana kila kitu ndani yake yeye hakuna ulemavu lakini ulemavu unatoka nje yake ambako ndio jamii inamtazama kwamba huyu mtu ana ulemavu na kwa nini ni kwa sababu jamii imekaa hivyo inatenga watu kwa hiyo ulemavu hauna sababu moja kuna mtu ambaye anasema ah ulemavu unatoka wapi tuna ulemavu wa makundi mengi sana lakini ni labda niongelee ambao umeainishwa kwenye sera na matamko ya kimataifa na ya kitaifa ulemavu tuna aina sita tunaweza kusema ama saba tuna ulemavu wa viungo au anaitwa physical impaired people kuna wenye matatizo wenye, wenye, wenye ulemavu wa kuona au anaita wana visual impairment kuna wenye ulemavu wa ngozi to skin impairment yapo kuna wenye matatizo ya kusikia mtu deaf or hearing impairment kwenye wana matatizo ya usonji ni autism 
kwenye wana matatizo ya utindio wa ubongo cognitive intellectual impairment na nyingine nyingi kuna nyingine kwa sehemu hii lakini zipo kwa mfano kuna mtu ana matatizo ana ulemavu wa kijamii kuishi na wenzake hawezi huyu ni socially impaired person and a behavioral impairment or disability hawezi akakaa na wenzake wakaelewana ni mgomvi ni nini na nini yeye huyo hawajamweka kwenye kundi la unaona kwa sababu sisi kila mmoja ana asira zake kwa kila mmoja ana ulemavu wake lakini kwa kiwango fulani unaona kwa hiyo na na hizi hizi aina zote za ulemavu zinatokana na sababu mbalimbali hakuna sababu moja inayosababisha aina zote za ulemavu kuna zile ambazo tunasika zikiwa kwenye makundi mawili tu kuna sababu zile ambazo um, za kuzaliwa yani mtu anazaliwa tayari anakuwa kwenye hali ile na kuna zile sababu za kukuta baada ya kuzaliwa inaitwa environmental or acquired anaipata akiwa ameshazaliwa sasa hizi zinazoza ajali magonjwa kwa mfano kaugua tu hapa malaria ukaenda kwa kwa drip ya kwinini kwinini kaende kachana huko kwenye osco ikachana kwenye cochlea ikalaza zile cells ikalaza zile ya cells zikilala tayari mnaingia shida ya kutusikia na kadhalika vibration na shida kupita ile mitetemeko ya shida kupita tayari mshapokiziwi unaweza kupigwa kofi tunapata cases nyingi za hapa watu wanagombana nyumbani amepigwa kofi kwenye sikio amesababisha pressure kwenye nje ya sikio anachana ngozi mtu amepigwa kiziwi kuna matatizo ya ugonjwa kuna matatizo ya ajali mtu anadondoka anavunja miguu yote tayari huyo na kadhalika kuna mtu amemwagiwa siku za hapo juma tulikuwa tunasikia mtu amemwagiwa tindikali machoni haoni tena tayari amekuwa mlemavu lakini hakuzaliwa hivyo ila amekuta kwa hiyo ule mavu kwa aina nyingi na sababu mbalimbali kwa ujumla wake hiyo ndio ule mavu aina ya ule mavu na sababu za ule mavu na ule mavu ni nini kwa hiyo ule mavu hauko ndani ya watu wenye ule mavu isipokuwa huko nje yao na nisi jamii inavyoyoa mambo ya Uh, asante sana kwa hilo kwa sababu umeongelea kitu kingine cha msingi sana kwamba kuna ulemavu mwingine ambao watu hawauoni pengine basi kwa sababu pengine na wao wale walipaswa kutafsiri unawahusu wakaogopa kutafsiri kwa sababu wanaona mimi nikisema ulemavu pengine wa kushinda kwa kukaa vizuri na watu hata na mimi watanisema lakini au ni mlemavu kwa tu ni neno ambalo linatumika kwa ajili ya unyenyapaa mm-hmm. na ninaona ni kwamba kumbe ulemavu ni unyenyapaaji mm-hmm. na ndio maana basi hawa watu wananyimwa fursa mbalimbali za wao kushiriki katika shughuli mbalimbali za maana kwa sababu wanakuwa wananyenyapaliwa mm-hmm. Na hivyo basi inakuwa ni wito kwetu kuweka haya mambo sawa. Kwa sababu kumbe sisi sote kwa namna moja au nyingine tuna ulemavu wa aina fulani. Na tunapaswa basi kuvumiliana, kusaidiana na kuimarishana na sio kuweza kutengana. Hivyo uh, leo tunapojadiliana swala hili. Pengine ningependa labda kwa sababu wewe umekwishafanya utafiti na um, unaendelea kufanya utafiti mpaka sasa na pia uko ni taasisi ambayo inajihusisha na mambo ya kuandaa watendaji wa kazi ambao wanaweza kufanya mawasiliano na watu wenye uhitaji maalum kama huo ikiwemo pia na sala la, 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 la saikolojia ambayo basi ndio changamoto ambayo umeisema pekee na watu waisemi ya watu kuwa na shida ya kuweza kushindwa kushindwa kuishi ya kukopi na wenzao ni ni, ni mtazamo upi wa kisheria pengine au wa kisera ambao unakuja kwa ajili ya kuimarisha haki za hawa watu. Ni nini ambacho kipo au uh, unaona kwamba basi wala mazingira yanatakiwa kuwa hivi na hivi na hivi na hivi kadiri ya miongozi ya sheria na kanuni. Asante bwana kama eh, eh, Tanzania imesaini itifaki mbalimbali za kimataifa ambazo zinailazimisha kujali haki za binadamu. Na moja kati ya hao binadamu ambao niweka kwenye invented ni hawa watu wenye mahitaji maalum. Nimesema vizuri sana watu wenye mahitaji maalum. Kwa sababu sera imesema ukijaribu kusoma sera vizuri, ukijaribu kusoma matamko ya, ya serikali kipindwa na ingia kwamba kila sekta itengeneze mazingira ambayo kila mmoja atajisikia ni rafiki ya yeye kuishi. Kwa hiyo eh, hakuna aina moja ya uwezeshaji wa hawa watu kukaa kama nilivyosema kila mtu mwenye ulemavu ana aina yake ya ulemavu na ana mahitaji yake maalum 
Kwa mfano sisi ambao tunaandaa wataalamu wa baadaye tunaweza kutoa mwito kwa mabenki, wa wale shule, wa hospitali, zote hizo zo. Lazima tuhakikishe kwamba tuna mazingira wezeshi ya kila mtu atakayefika pale au pate huduma. Ukienda mabenki yetu kwa mfano tutajiuliza je, tuna slopes mteremko ile ya mtu akija na basikeli anaingia tunayo hilo la kwanza tunaweka tiki kuna lifti ya kumpandisha orofani hakuna kwa nini kwenye mabenki tuna hiyo ni kwa ajili ya mtu mwenye ulemavu wa viungo je kwa kizimu tuna mkalimani wa lugha ya alama kama hatuna tunajipangaje akija tunamhudumiaje tunaweka pembeni akija mtu asiye mtu mwenye mwenye, mwenye, mwenye basi ni ule mavu wa wa wa, wa, wa kuona asiyeona kwa mfano kwenye zile slips zetu za benki zina blail kwa hiyo sera imeweka bayana kwamba kila taasisi moja lazima kwanza kiingia kwenye sera ya ajira sheria ya ajira lazima asilimia tatu ya watu wako wawe watu wenye ule mavu hiyo moja kuwa nao ni moja kuwatengenezea mazingira ya wao kukaa pale ni mbili lakini tatizo kubwa la jamii kama nilivyosema tumeshaona kwamba watu wenye ulemavu hawana uwezo wa kuweza kufanya kazi vizuri kwa kawaida ile neno kawaida noma si kwa hiyo kama tunaona kwamba hawa watu waweza wakafanya hawa watu kizivi waweza kufanya kazi benki kizivi waweza kawa daktari mtu asiyeona hawezi akafanya kazi benki mtu anayetumia basikeli hawezi mwenye ulemavu wa viungo hawezi akafanya kazi benki tumeshawatenga tumewanyanyapaa tunaona hawa watu hawezi si wetu si ni kakodi fulani hivi kanaenda 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 wananyanyapaliwa albino hatuwezi kana albino sisi kwanza hawa albino kuna neno mmoja bana za kule vijijini wanaita ni dili kwamba dili albino nayo kata viseme ya viungo vyake wanakupa utajiri najiuliza ndani ya albino kama kuna utajiri kwa albino mwenye si tajiri huyu sasa sengejuza mwili wote kabisa sasa awe tajiri kabisa eh kwa kuna conception ambazo na kuna maana ambazo hazina maana kwa hiyo unapoingia kwenye sera kwenye sheria za jira sheria sera za za taifa ziko wazi kusoma katiba inasema kila mmoja ana haki ya kuishi. Yes. Kila mmoja ana haki ya kusikiwa. Yes. Kila mmoja ana haki ya kupata huduma. Kila mmoja ana haki ya kushiriki kitu chochote kile. Kwa hiyo haki, haki za huyu mtu mwenye ulemavu zimaainishwa na kubainishwa kwenye katiba. Zimaainishwa na kubainishwa kwenye sera, kwa mfano sera za watu wenye ulemavu mwaka 2004. Kwenye sheria yao ya mwaka 2010 imeainishwa vizuri kabisa. Shida inakuja ni kwa wale sasa kwa mfano waajili, sio kwa nini naye ni mzigo kwa sababu unaweza kashinda kwamba yale malengo ya taasisi yanaweza sifiwe kwa sababu kuna huyu mtu kwa hiyo tumeshaunganisha mtu mwenye ulemavu kwamba hawezi yani disability na nabili tumeunganisha kwa mtu mwenye ulemavu hawezi kwenda lakini huyo huyo kuna watu ambao wanajiita hawana ulemavu hawana mafanikio ambayo mtu mwenye ulemavu anayo kwa mfano nimekapo kuna kwa watu wasioona kuna maprofesa kwenye kundi la watu wanaojiona wenye wako kawaida kuna mtu ambaye ame hata darasa la 7 hajafika sasa kati ya huyu na huyu nani ni disabled? <laughs> kwa sababu sasa mtu hawezi kwenda. Leo tumesikia takwimu ambazo sio nzuri sana kuzisema lakini naweza kazisema. Siku hizi kuna kasumba unasikia nguvu za kiume, nguvu za kiume kama tunarudi kwenye definition ya huyu ya ulemavu kwamba mtu ambaye anakosa ufanisi sehemu fulani ya maisha yake inaomfanya ashindwe kuishi maisha ya kawaida maana yake asilimia zaidi ya 30 ya wanaume ni walemavu. Hili ya tulioni Sisi tunajaribu kunielewa. Kwa hiyo tukiona definition hiyo basi sisi wote kila mmoja ni mlemavu tu. Lakini ni degree gani ni kiwango gani cha ulemavu kinatufanya sasa kuna kile kinaonekana moja kwa moja kwa sababu akipita kutoka bahana nguvu za kiume. Kwa mfano. Huwezi kumjua. Vivyo hivyo akipita kizimi barabarani anatembea huwezi kumjua. Tunaweza tukaona tu wale wachapchapa. Lakini wengine huwezi kaona kwa hiyo ulemavu ni mpana kila mmoja ni mlemavu. Kila mmoja ni mlemavu kwa wakati wake. Kama nilivyosema, kuna wale mavu wale, kuna watu leo wenye ulemavu leo zaliwa nao, kuna wengine wamepata baadaye. Kwa hiyo wewe sijua leo tunaongea mimi hapa na wewe kwenye interview, mtatoka hapo nje nitagonga gari, nitakuwa nitatembea kiti, tayari nimesha ndio kwenye ulemavu. Mwanzo nilikuwa naona wale mavu wafai, leo mimi nitaona wasifai. Kwa tunahitaji tuondoe mawazo hasi 
juu ya watu wenye ulemavu kwa sababu neno lenyewe ulemavu limejengwa kwenye misingi basi ndio um, kwa kweli nina ninaliona hili lakini basi naona pia kabisa sehemu kubwa uh, ya ya swala hili pengine basi ni mtazamo ambao msingi wake unaweza kwa ni kwenye familia zetu kwamba pengine kwa kwenye familia zetu basi hatuoni kama familia zinawajali watu wengine pengine wanawaficha basi hata wakipoa wakubwa kwa bahati mbaya wakaonekana basi hata wao hawakuwa pa nafasi hiyo kubwa na kama upendo haujaanzia katika familia sidhani kama ni rahisi sana watu wengine wa nje kumpenda huyu mtu kumbe thamani kubwa ya watu inapaswa kuanzia ndani ya familia na familia ikianza kuathamini wa watu na kuwaheshimu kimsingi utaona kabisa na wao wataishi maisha ya furaha kumbe basi tuna wajibu mkubwa sasa kuziamsha familia zetu jamii zetu na sisi sote kuwa na uelewa mkubwa kwamba hawa ni watu sawa na watu wengine na tuwajumuishe na kuwashirikisha katika kupanga maamuzi, kufikiri pamoja, kujadili pamoja ili kwanza inawasaidia wao kujenga furaha, kuwa na amani kwa sababu ukimtenga mtu tayari unamtengeneza tatizo. Kwa hiyo anaweza kana tatizo hivi lakini ukamtengeneza tatizo lingine la kisaikolojia pia. Na nafikiri pia sasa kuna haja ya kuwa na watu wengi ambao ni wataalamu haya mambo kama walivyosema mwanzo. Swala hili linahitaji ujuzi, linahitaji wewe kwa sababu kweli tuzi kwa tunampenda mtu fulani lakini basi hatuna ujuzi wa kushirikiana na yeye. Unakuta tunakaa kwenye familia hatuna mtu ambaye na mambo mengine pengine ni sensitive, ni mambo ambayo ni muhimu sana. Hatuwezi kila mtu ku, kuyatafsiri kwa maana kumuingiza mtu nje ya familia aje. Kwa hiyo kuna haja ya kwenda chini kuchunguza na kuona je, tutatengeneza mifumo ipi ili katika kila familia ambayo ina shida kama hizi kuweza kuwaimarisha pengine wazazi wenyewe wala kuwa na ABC zile za, za jinsi ya kukaa na watu kama hawa kwa sababu mwisho wa siku wa katika jamii zetu kama ilivyokuwa siku za nyuma tuliona pengine biashara ya utumwa ikifanyika watu waliuzwa wakatumika katika shughuli mbalimbali za ujeshaji walifanya kuwa wanyama lakini kadi siku hizo zilikwenda watu walipiga kelele wakawatetea na leo biashara hii imebaki ikienda inapotea kumbe basi hata hawa nao wanapaswa kupiganiwa lakini pia kuimarishwa na hasa kuhakikisha katika sheria kanuni na miongozo yetu katika kila kikundi kinachotengenezwa hasa vikundi vya kiuchumi au tuseme labda eh, vikundi vya maendeleo lazima ili kisajiriwe kilete majina ya watu wa wala watatu katika kila watu kumi wala watatu wawepo watu wenye ulemavu na sio ulemavu wa aina moja iwe kabisa moja kwa moja labda mwe na mtu mwenye waubino labda mmoja mwe na mtu ambaye labda ana ulemavu wa kusikia mmoja na mwe na mtu mwingine labda ambaye ana ulemavu wa viungo ili wa watu wasitengeneze vikundi vya peke yao wakabaki peke yao maana watajisaidiaje sio rahisi incrusion iwepo sio tu darasani hata katika shughuli zetu za maendeleo kwa mfano katika maeneo ya ibada tu labda na, na, na watu wa kutafsiri tuwe na hizo slabs ambazo zimesemekana ikadiri inavyowezekana kadiri ya uwezo tuanze kama serikali ilipoanza kwa kuanzisha madarasa ambayo ni ya shule za mchanganyiko basi mazingira yaboreshwe na sisi pia tuboreshe siku zinazozidi kwenda naamini viongozi wa dini wana, ma, wana maamuzi makubwa katika sehemu zao za za, 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 za za dini viongozi wa taasisi za elimu afya Una, sheria inataka pia kwa mfano katika mazingira au maeneo ambayo ni ya kutoa huduma za afya uh, wanapaswa kuwa na dirisha maalum la kuhudumia hawa watu lakini bado utekelezaji wake si juu koje nini mnaofanya utafiti mnaweza mkatusaidia hapo baadaye lakini pia katika zile asilimia kumi zinazotengwa kwa ajili ya kusaidia kina mama vijana pamoja na watu na, na, na watu wenye ulemavu hizi fedha ziweze kuhakikisha kweli zinawasaidia hawa watu kwa sababu ukiwatenga kwa mfano wa labda wote ni walemavu labda tuseme wa, wa viungo sio rahisi kukimbia huku na kule lakini ukiwachanganya na wengine inamaanisha kwamba ukiwa na kikundi cha watu wenye ulemavu wachanganyike wala watu watatu wawe na ambao hawana ulemavu kikiwa ni kikundi ambao cha watu si wenye ulemavu wala watu watatu wawe ni wenye ulemavu tutengeneze integration ambayo unaona kabisa focus yake ni kusaidia kwenda mbele kwa hiyo mimi nashukuru kwa juhudi ambazo mnazifanya ninyi kama taasisi za, za elimu ninyi kama watafiti binafsi na mambo mengine kama hayo na serikali hivyo basi tutaendelea kushirikishana kadi hii siku zinazozidi kwenda tuone tunaweza kufikia wapi ila tukumbuke sisi sote tuna ulemavu wa aina fulani hata kama sio wa viungo 
lakini basi tunaulimwengu wa aina fulani. Yeah. Na wale pengine ambao wanapitia changamoto labda unaona tutajadili siku zijazo baba, mama sio maubinu lakini mnaweza mtoto mwenye ubinu. Nini kinasawisha swala hili? Tutapata wasaa wa tutajadili pia labda siku nyingine. Labda uh, mheshimiwa kabla hatujamaliza unalipi la kumalizia kusema? Eh hey, asante kuna tuseme moja mawili. La, la kwanza ili swala ili tuweze ku ondoa huu unyanyapaji ili swala tunalianzia kwenye familia familia kwa sababu kwa Tanzania tumekuwa na kasumba nyingi tuseme tuna tabia mtoto anazaliwa alafu mzazi hachukui jukumu la kufuatilia maendeleo ya mtoto wake kwenye kukua huko ndiko sehemu ya kwanza ya kwanza kutambua eh, tofauti za mtoto kwa mfano mtoto mpaka anafikisha miezi sita, mtoto anafikisha mwaka mmoja kwa mfano hajaweza kutamka neno lolote mzazi anasema huyu ah, atakuwa na kiburi atakuwa na nini hapana ana shida kwenye kuongea ana speech impairment anza kumtambua mapema umpeleke kwenye vituo husika aweze kupata msaada ana ulemavu fulani wanaweza akafanywa therapy ikamsaidia kumtoa pale hapa sisi tunafanya 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 therapies hapa tunasaidia watu wanakuja vizii wanakuja watu wenye ulemavu tofauti tofauti tunawasaidia tunavyoweza lakini kikubwa ni identification utambuzi wa tatizo awali kabisa ni kazi ya familia hilo ni, ni moja lakini mbili kutambua tu kwamba ulemavu si haina uhusiano wowote na kushindwa kufanya kazi kwamba ukiwa mlemavu wewe sasa ni hoye ha he unakaa hapo unasubiri kufa umezaliwa tu wewe una ulemavu kwa mfano wa viungo uwezi kutembea kazi yako inabaki ni omba omba mzazi anakata tamaa kuna familia moja ni kwa masomoni Afrika Kusini kuna familia moja ilileta mtoto ana miaka nane karibu tisa ana autism sonji wazazi wameshindwa kabisa kuishinda wamechanganyikiwa kabisa sasa kile kitu tunachofanya mimi kinafanya hizo kazi kinafanya tunaangaika na watu wa namna hiyo kwa hiyo mzazi akafika pale akamweka hapa akaacha hapo a a mtanipa majibu Yaani wazazi wamekata tamaa kabisa mzazi akikata akiza mtoto mwenye ulemavu anakata tamaa kabisa na wazazi Mungu amenipa msalaba mzito siwezi kubeba. Hapana. Kwa hiyo tutambue kabisa kwamba wewe mtoto mwenye mtoto mwenye ana ulemavu ameonekana ana ulemavu aina fulani. Peleke shule. Shule itamuokoa. Peleke shule, peleke shule usikaenee nyumbani usimfiche mtoe. Kwa sababu ukimtoa bora upate shida ya kumhudumia ndani ya miaka kadhaa akiwa shule. Akimaliza hapo atajitegemea. Tunaona watu wengi sana wanaoitwa wenye ulemavu, wana maisha mazuri sana. Kuliko watu ambao hawana ulemavu. Kwa hiyo tuondoe mawazo hasi jaliyo juu ya watu wenye ulemavu. Wanaweza. Wanaweza, wana uwezo ni viumbe halisi kwa sababu tunaoamini sisi kwenye Biblia. Unasema Mungu alimuumba alituumba mwishoni pale anasema mtazamo alichokiumba Mungu ni chema tena ni chema sana usimkosoe Mungu kesho ukimkosoa wewe mzamu mtoto mwenye walbino kesho kutwa utawao mnyo ukapata ulemavu fulani ukawa uoni ukamwagia tindikali ukapigwa kofi masikio akaondoka ukapata ajali ukavunjika miguu ulikuwa unamwona albino huyu anatembea kwa miguu yake wewe uko juu ya stuli kwa hiyo tuondoe ma wazo hasi tuzikuwa tu nyule mavu kama ulivyosema sehemu mbalimbali za huduma wawepo wapewe huduma makanisani tunamhubiri kuhusu Mungu misikitini tunamhubiri Mungu lakini huyo Mungu anaonekana kwa watu bado mnawatenga watu makanisani mtu asiyeweza kusikia hakuna huduma yoyote inaweza kufikisha neno la Mungu sasa kuna huduma una uhubiri unamhubiria nani kwa hiyo lazima tuwe na spectrum pana ya kuweza kutambua hii watu wenye ule mavu lakini tuweze kuwasaidia mimi langu ni hilo ni ni ni, 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 ni wakaribishe jamii kwa ujumla familia taasisi mbalimbali mtu mmoja mmoja watafiti tuweze kwa pamoja kushikana mkono kuweza kuondoa mawazo hasi haya nchi nyingine zilizoendelea kama za Ulaya na Marekani na kidogo Afrika Kusini wameanza kuhama kabisa kwenye haya wameona ni kawaida wameshatengenezea sera nzuri na sheria zinazobana kwa hiyo kule usikusie watu wanalialia ule mavu a sisi ndio bado tunalia ule mavu tunaulileti na uchawi na nini lakini wenzenye wenzetu wako mbele ndio maana sisi watu wenye ule mavu ulaya wanatutumia msaada sisi tukisomsha kile yani ya kiendi na nakushukuru sana kwa kweli basi ni sala kumshukuru Mungu
kwamba haya tunayoyasikia ndio tunayopaswa pia kuyaishi kwa sababu ndio uhalisia kwa pengine wale ambao wanaonekana hawana uwezo kwetu ndio wanaotusaidia kutoka nje ya nchi yeah. nyingine kumbe na sisi tunapaswa kuwasaidia wale ambao hawana uwezo katika familia zetu kumbe wanaweza kando watu kwa kusaidia familia zetu basi mimi nakushukuru tutakutana wakati mwingine tujadiliane pia tuone uh, taasisi mbalimbali ambazo zinahusika na mambo haya ya wale mavu Tanzania ikiwemo na shida wata na taasisi nyingine kama hizo basi nakushukuru sana uh, mwalimu wangu na uh, lecturer wangu basi nikutakie jumapili njema na tutakutana tena katika vipindi vijavyo Asante sana na Mungu akubariki sasa. Asante. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.